I am Usha Pathak, elders. Please accept my respect and love to youngers. In my previous two audio videos, I have introduced you about pronoun and classification of pronoun. Now, today I am teaching you modification of pronoun. Nouns have the same modification as nouns, namely person, number, gender and cases. In the personal pronouns, most of these properties are distinguished by the words themselves in the relative and the interrogative pronouns. They are as certain chiefly by means of the antecedent and the verb. Interrogative pronouns, however, as well as the relatives, which, what, as, and all the compounds of who, which, and what are always of the third person. Even in etymological parsing some regards must be had to the syntactical relations of words by modification we commonly mean actual changes in the form of words by which their grammatical properties are inherently distinguished but in all languages, the distinguishable properties of words are somewhat more numerous than their actual variation of form. There being certain principles of universal grammar which cause the person, number, gender or case of somewhat words to be inferred from their relation to the others or what is nearly the same thing. From the sense which is conveyed by the sentence, hence if in a particular instance it happen that some or even all of these properties are without any index in the form of the pronoun itself, they are still to be ascribed in parsing because they may be easily and certainly discovered from the construction. For example, in the following text, it is just as easy to discern the genders of the pronouns as the cases of the nouns and both are known and as asserted to be what they are. Upon principles of mere inference who betrayed her companion, not I. For what knowest thou, O wife, where thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, shalt save thy wife? Here, being of the feminine gender, it is the inference of every reader or listener. That who and I or so too, but whether the word companion is masculine or feminine is not so obvious. The personal pronoun of the first and second person are equally applicable to both sexes and should be considered masculine or feminine according to the no application of them. The speaker and the hearer being present to each other, of course, know the sex 
to which they respectively belong and whenever they appear in narrative or dialogue we are told who they are in this instance then let the parser call those of first person masculine and those of the second feminine my mother when i learn that thou wast dead see wast thou conscious of the tears i shed that the persons of the first and second are sometimes masculine and sometimes feminine in perfectly certain but whether they can or cannot be neuter is of question difficult to be decided to things in animate they are applied only figuratively and the question is whether the figure always necessarily changes the gender of the antecedent noun we assume the general principle that the noun and its pronoun are always of the same gender and we know that when inanimate objects are personified in the third person they are usually represented as masculine or feminine the gender being changed by the figure but when a lifeless object is spoken to in the second person or represented as is speaking in the first as the pronouns here employed are in themselves without distinction of gender no such change can be proved by the mere words and if we allow that it would be needless to imagine it where the words do not prove it the gender of these pronouns must in such cases be neuter because we have no ground to think it otherwise please subscribe my channel like and share with your friends